The passage today is from Acts 21, verse 13 to 14. Then Paul answered, What are you doing, weeping and crying, and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but even to die at Jerusalem, for the name of the Lord Jesus. And since he would not be persuaded, we fell silent, remarking, The will of the Lord be done. If we are to be obedient, there is a tension between safety and obedience. Uncertainty is a necessary component of faith. Faith involves risk. It might not work out. We might get hurt. We must be aware and governed by the overarching reality that someone did get hurt. Someone did get killed. Scripture is not calling us to be crazy or brash. Risk is the place where willingness embraces danger. Faith is the conviction that there is a certainty of obedience. It counts for more. It counts for more than the possibility of loss. Either we go forward whatever the cost, rather than linger in disobedience. Theoretical and practical Christianity are two different things. Theoretically you can say you're like Daniel or, or Joshua, but practically Paul lives that life. Paul then answered, what are you doing weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. He then got ready and started on his way. What are you ready for theoretically? Aim, 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 way of life? That's how I've been living. One day I'll do God's will. One day I'll read the Bible before I go on Facebook. One day I'll witness to my neighbor at work or at university or about my home. One day, aim, aim, aim. Some people aim and some people achieve. That's because they got started. This makes me think of Samwise Gamgee in the Lord of the Rings book, where it says, it's the job that's never started that takes the longest to finish. Radical disciple and leader of the Simple Way community uh, is Shane Claiborne. And he set up this community in Philadelphia in America where he works with the poor and the needy. And he's written numerous books and he blogs online about saints who in the past have, have done miraculous things, um, things that are so godly that they need to be blasted out onto to Facebook or onto the web. And uh, in his blog he says, Jesus never says to the poor, come find the church. Shane says that Jesus puts it the other way around and says we should go into the world and find the poor, the hungry, the homeless, the imprisoned, the, the, the naked. Jesus in his disguises. Read scriptures like Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Jesus tells us that ultimately we'll be separated between sheep and goats. And the criteria will be how much we cared for the poor, the imprisoned, the hungry, the naked masses. Sheep and goats. And I couldn't help but wonder that when we get to that final judgment day, will we all be sheep? Pastor Ronnie of Danube International Church and my father would both agree that the most impressive piece of original writing in the English language would be Henry V by William Shakespeare. And there's this central point in this play where Henry calls his few men to arms against the immeasurable force of the French army across the way. And he says to them, if we are marked to die, we are to die, and it will do our country loss. And if to live the fewer men, the greater share of honor, God's will, I pray thee, wish no man more. Let he which has no stomach for this fight, let him depart. We would not die in that man's company that fears his fellowship to die with us. He that outlives this day and comes safe home will stand a tiptoe when this day is named. He that shall live this day and see old age will yearly on this day will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say these wounds I had upon that day. This story shall the good man teach his son from this day to the ending of the world. For we in it shall be remembered. We few we happy few, we band of brothers, 
for he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, for he near so vile. Gentlemen in England now abed shall think themselves accursed that they were not here and hold their manhoods cheap whilst any speaks that fought upon St. Crispin's day. I am a pacifist, I am not calling you to war or calling you to go out and fight and shed your blood or to do anything crazy. But we must join it. Get involved in God's mission. I'll keep banging on that drum. I was so impassioned and encouraged by what Gurgu said last week. And it reminded me of uh, something that Slim Charles says in HBO's show The Wire. If you're in it, you're in it. I wish not to be a man who, like Henry says, lies abed in England and thinks myself accursed and holds my manhood cheap. I'd rather be like Paul, who says, Hey, I'm ready to be bound and to die for the Lord Jesus. All like Ben Linus in Lost reminds us that the Apostle Thomas, he said, let us go to Jerusalem and die with him. We feed the homeless every Tuesday. We gather together with YWAM, which is another organization that works in Budapest. We give them food and we give them clothes. We meet at Calvin Tier at 5.30 every week. If you could spare an hour or spare two, come along and meet these people, share with them and listen to their stories. And you'll be amazed of what you see in them and you'll see the reflection of Jesus in their eyes. And it's something special. So come along, bring a couple spare shirts, maybe a couple trousers, and give and start. And no longer aim, aim, aim. And do not lie for bed and aim.